You just took the oath of enlistment to join the United States Army. What's next? After all the time with your recruiter and all the testing you took at MEPS, it's time to say goodbye to your family and head off to your new life. Everyone talks about basic training, but what happens in the reception? Let's get into it. What's going on, you guys? Eric O'Brien finally coming back with another video. Yes, I'm sat in Atlanta, but this is going to be a travel vlog. But like what I wanted to know when I was shipping off to the army and what part you want to know, what happens in reception. <laughs> Like I said, so you finally signed up for the military. What are your first few days like? The importance of knowing what you're doing the first few days is because this is your first time doing anything like this. This is your first time of your reality. So it's something to actually really kind of understand, know before you actually get into it. So the day you get there and everything, uh, things are gonna seem long. And the reason why it's gonna seem long is because you've been kind of used to having a schedule, knowing what you're doing uh, from breakfast all the way to dinner, but you don't know what's happening here at the reception. And that's the reasoning. Uh, we're not gonna give you a schedule. You're not, we're not gonna tell you, hey, you're gonna do this, 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 and then you'll be done at blah, blah, blah. Everything is just, you follow the drill sergeants, you just go along with the schedule. Um, sometimes you might not even have a watch with you and the days are just going to be super long and you're just not going to know what's going to happen. So you pretty much get into a place like this, the airport, right? And then you have to go grab your bags. You can be instructed to grab your bags. You have a packet in your hands. That's how we can tell you kind of the training. And then um, you'll go to the USO usually, and you'll meet an NCO there. But you won't leave until there's enough trainees to go on the on the bus. So if there's only 20 people, you're gonna have to wait for a little bit more people. But if there's just amount of people that are needed, then you guys are ready to go and ship off to reception. Some airports are busy, some airports aren't. Um, I'll tell you now, Atlanta is busy, but for the most part, you won't be here to go to reception. When you're there, you get on the bus, and this is your bus ride to reception, and you're gonna meet a drill sergeant, but it isn't going to be your drill sergeant. This is gonna be a drill sergeant that's gonna be in charge of you for a little while, um, actually just get you to the place, and then hand you off to the next drill sergeant. This airport ever. Here's a big tip that I will give you. Your social security number is practically your serial number in the military. So I would say to memorize that because you don't want to be trying to pull out a piece of paper or whatnot or have um, your social security number or card easily for other people to grab it. So I would say it's to at least memorize your social security card because you're going to write it so many times throughout, throughout reception. back home so let's talk about day zero so you get off the bus and it's time for your amnesty brief so this is gonna be the phase where the drill sergeant tell you what you can and cannot have uh, brief everything to you um, with everything that you brought with you so within saying that that is the time where you can actually throw everything away um, you put the stuff that you are keeping on one side so they can check it and then the things that you know are prohibited you go throw it away and I can tell you I remember this clearly even though it's been like nine years um, I remember having this amnesty brief dumping everything out on a table so they can go through our stuff to make to make sure everything that we were bringing was safe allowed and all that and right before i left to go on the bus i went to starbucks i got a naked juice my favorite mango juice um and then i got a sandwich and i was like you know 
I put it in my bag and I'm like, I'm gonna save this for later because I'm gonna have time to eat it. We have the bus. It's not like once we get off the bus, they're, they're gonna be like, oh, time to go to base training. I thought there was like a little break before doing the amnesty brief, not, doing, not, not knowing there was an amnesty brief that we were gonna have. And we did not. We got off the bus and that was the first thing we had to do. And sadly, the thing I bought with my voucher, because you get a voucher when you go, um, when you get shipped off, I had to throw away. So it was sad, but I was like, I can't keep it. If I keep it, I'm gonna get in trouble. So just threw that away, um, threw my food away. And yeah, that was the amnesty brief. So I'm telling you, if you think you could keep something, you're not gonna be able to. They're gonna look through your bag, they're gonna look through all the stuff that you're bringing. That's not gonna be the last time you have to go through a shakedown. And then depending on what day it is, if you get there early or whatnot, um, let's talk about your first night. It's gonna be your first night where you get there and you think, okay, I'm gonna get a good night's rest and all that. No. Um, I definitely didn't. Um, it was different. It may be different now. It was all open showers. It's just a little bit different to me. I'm very used to having not my own things, but being with people that are, that are family. And um, these were all strangers. So make sure you keep your stuff locked. I'll tell you about that later on. But I got there. Um, it was like night. Went to sleep, but you don't get a full night's sleep. You know, you still gotta wake up early. But then this is your first time pulling fire guard where you're rotating. Um, every hour on the hour, it's a new fire guard shift. And it might be two people, it might be three, four, five. Depending you, if you have to do buddy wash, depending on X, Y, and Z, you're gonna have to pull fire guard your first night you're there. So don't expect a good night's rest before you actually gotta do everything. And my baby's home. I gotta go pick up my car because we're going on TDY today. And I'm actually gonna bring her and I'm excited. Here's my baby. She's right there. Go get her. Whoa! You look cute. Where are you going? To the. Can you tell me why she's more for him other than that? Uh, that, that was that was one of a few things. Yeah. We got a new whip. New whip. A whoop you. <laughs> what? The first day is gonna be kind of like a long day, a big day, because you have to do so many things. Um, by the way, when you get to um, reception, you're not wearing your civilian clothes anymore. You get there and you get PT clothes right away. So you get the APFU, the Army Physical Fitness Uniform. And I didn't know they were unisex. So when they asked me what size I was, I asked for a medium and that was a male medium. So the whole time in basic training, I was like swimming in this these clothes. But later on, you might have the chance to go ahead and buy some PT clothes, but that was my mistake. I should have been more. So you're gonna be in PT clothes and all that stuff. You're gonna get there, you're gonna get your CAC. And this is something you do not do not want to lose, even if you're in the regular military, you lose that, you get a counseling statement, it's a big ordeal, so don't lose your cat card. And then you're going to get your smart card, so that's kind of like a voucher for you, and that's paying for your, um, paying for certain things that you are going to get when you go to the shop at, um, males get $250 and females get $350 just because we have extra things we need to buy uh, female wise. Again, uniform and all that stuff. Try to have good running shoes already, but they might make you have to buy certain running shoes if those running shoes that you have will actually injure you. Um, if you haven't gotten your ACU yet, your army combat uniform, which is what people like to call the OCPs, which is a pattern, um, you're gonna go get your uniform there, you're gonna get size, they're gonna look at you, you're gonna try it on, and if you don't feel comfortable for it, if you think it's too loose, if you think it's too um, slim, you gotta tell them off the bat, like just tell them. They might be a hard ass on you, but it's a uh, it's different people, not your drill sergeants fitting you and all that stuff. So you're gonna have to tell them, hey, it's too loose, too big, or whatever it is. Um, don't try to go f a big full size up because you're gonna lose weight and people tend to like drown in them. And if it's not two size smaller, at the end of basic training, they're gonna say, oh, we can't DX them, which is where you could bring your stuff in and they give you the same thing but in a smaller size or whatever size you need. And then you have to go through your testing as well, your medical exam, your physical exam. Um, for females, your pregnancy test, and for you know the whole pandemic happening that as well. And don't forget blood tests. They have to check your blood and all that stuff. But and then you're gonna have to go through briefings such as like the GI Bill, SGLI, which is Service Members Group Life Insurance. Um, it's something that you have to update every year. And this is where you disclose anything that you haven't mentioned. Yeah, you might have gone through things, and they might have let you pass, or they didn't they didn't figure out something soon this is your time to tell whomever everything that you haven't told the drill sergeants the map station whatever i got my head in the clouds i don't want to come down i got one two three people doubting me now